We still divide uh, and classify myopia into at least this 26 different types and they are all part of uh, subclasses based on age of born. For example, a child born with congenital myopia, a school age myopia, myopia associated with prematurity and a juvenile onset or even in late adulthood we have had an onset of myopia. Based on the speed of progression, myopia could be divided into progressive or rapidly progressive, stationary or permanently progressive myopia. When you have structural changes associated with myopia, it could be a pathological or degenerative myopia or no significant structural changes. You can say simple myopia, syndromic myopia or physiologic myopia that happens at night time. These are all part of pseudo myopia and, and uh, it's still, still should not be considered as part of myopia as far as IMI definition is concerned. One can also classify myopia based on biometric defects such as axial myopia or lenticular myopia, corneal myopia or you can say myopic astigmatism. They all behave in a very different manner and atropine would have very different effect on these types of myopia. One can classify myopia based on inter-eye refractive difference like patient having unilateral myopia or an anisomyopia, that means anisometropia in myopia. Or you may have magnitude-based classification, myopia which is say less than one diopter can be classified as low myopia, one to six diopter could be medium myopia, more than six up to eight is high, more than that is very high and now a new definition coming up for lower than the low myopia which is pre-myopia. Pseudophagic myopic shift is a spectrum and now with the use of atropine for treatment of myopia, you can classify uh, myopia as far as the response to atropine is concerned. The myopia that has poor response to atropine, myopia that is just not responsive to atropine or a breakthrough and a rebound myopia.